If you've never heard of it, Watabu is a free online city generator that allows you to customize a huge variety of options for your fantasy city. I've already made a video on using Watabu in conjunction with Photoshop to make even better looking maps that you can see up here, but today we're going to be combining it with Wonderdraft to take it a step further and create something that looks even more realistic. So to get started, let's head over to the Watabu website. I'll leave a link in the description below and take a look at what we have here. So as you can see, it generates a fantasy city for you. Now on the right hand side here, you can change the size of your city from small, medium to large. It has tools for you to be able to warp things like roads to move them into places that you're happier with. And then it has a whole host of options and it's the options where you're going to spend the most time when making cities at this stage of the process. So we're going to go into style and palette and here the only two options that I really like to use are either black and white with watercolor so the buildings are a different color or just plain black and white with gray buildings. You want to make sure that your annotations are off so you don't want the names for the city areas or the name for the city itself because we're going to be adding all of that in in Wonder Draft later. You also want to make sure that the legend is turned off. For hatching I think you end up with a better result if you keep that off. It makes the next step a little easier and I think it makes the final product look much more polished. Then make sure that thin lines isn't selected because you need those nice defined lines to help you in the next step. For buildings, you've got a couple of different options and all of them will work depending on what you want. So if you want to go for a block look and just colour in whole sections at a time, that's fine. Or if you want individual buildings or complex buildings, that's going to work just fine too. Then in terms of layouts, make sure farm fields is off because it's just going to add more work. You can add more roads if you want, it's not really important. It won't have a huge impact on what we're going to be doing next. You can add a citadel, a plaza or a temple. None of those are going to have a huge impact on the next step. Walls might impact you down the line and I'll talk about why in a minute. Shantytown I would leave off. The next stage of the process is removing all the white space and it adds a lot more work. To the process. So for our example I think I'm going to choose a medium-sized city with a citadel, with a river and a coast. So it's quite a complex city and that will work well for what we're going to be doing here. What you want to do from here is go to export as PNG and what I like to do is I like to export a version that is color and a version that is black and white. So if I export this here, we'll just call this test one and then change the palette to be black and white and we'll export that as test two. For this process, I recommend exporting maybe 20, 25 different cities with different settings and of different sizes. And the reason is we're going to be using these as assets within Wonderdraft to allow us to place them, rotate them, resize them as we see fit and create a bigger city using the elements from the Watabu generator. The next step in that process is to go to your downloaded image and open it up with either Photoshop or a similar software such as GIMP. I've got Photoshop so it's what I'll be using for this process but once your image is in and loaded you want to create a new layer and then you want to take your other version in my case the black and white version and you want to drag it in place the file and then you'll see on the right here a little icon has appeared over the layer that means we're not going to be able to edit that layer unless we right click and rasterize the layer so now we can edit both of these layers together and we'll use the magic wand tool to select as much of the white space as possible and delete it and then go to our bottom layer and click delete again and you can see it gets rid of the white space on both layers using that magic wand tool. We'll just go through and do this for all of the white space throughout the city. 
So there's all our white space selected. We'll just delete that off both layers. And then we can go in and start doing the same for our river. Once all the roads, rivers and coasts are deleted, the last thing you want to do before you can save these is delete the little outlying buildings that you find on the map. This just makes it easier to blend two different assets together without having these smaller buildings overlap anything. And then our base asset is complete. We can save that then as a PNG file for both the gray and the color version. The next thing that you want to do is you want to go and find where you saved those images. You can see that I've already done it for a huge number of Watabu cities already. So we go and we find our tests and we'll copy them. And then we're gonna open up Wonder Draft, open our user folder and find somewhere to put them. Now I'm gonna put them in the assets folder, in the example folder that you get with Wonder Draft. I've made a folder called Watabu within the symbols subfolder and I'll just paste those in there. So now that those are pasted in we can head into Wonder Draft and start doing the real work. Okay so we come into Wonder Draft and we're going to start by making a new map. I like to use the A6 template if I'm going to be using this map on a virtual tabletop but if I was going to print it I'd select either A4 or A5. So we select our template and our theme. I'm using the Avaro 4.0 which I'll link to in the description below but any theme will work we click OK let it generate and then we're presented with our map canvas now we're ready to get started making our city map so head to the symbols tab and you can see that I've already got some Watabu cities preloaded so we're going to start with our new city here and we're going to place it around there. The next thing that we're going to do is going to fill in that water area. So we're going to go into our land tool and lower land mass. Now we want to make sure that this is the right size. And then we want to go in and start removing some of this land to create our river. You don't have to be really neat at this step. You just want to rough in the waterway. You're going to go back in and refine those edges in a moment. And then we have a really rough version of our water system in place. We can go back into our symbols tab and we might select another area of city. So we might decide that there's a, another city district there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through and I am going to tidy up the water using my graphics tablet and then we'll get started on roads. So once our coastline is in place it's time to go in and start adding roads. To do this I use the path tool and I like to change the color to be more of a brown and I start out with zero roughness and I'll zoom into my map and I'll start by selecting a straight street. So right here is a good place to start. So I can see straight away that that isn't thick enough. So we'll increase the thickness a little and maybe a little bit more, maybe to 10. Perfect. So I'll drag that there. And then I go through street by street and add in roads to the entire city. So now we have all of our major roads added. It's time to go in and start adding detail through color. Now I'm using the Avoro 4.0 in this particular map, which has a whole bunch of color presets, which makes it ideal for something like this. It really cuts down on the amount of time that you have to spend custom choosing colors. So to get started, we are going to choose a nice dark ground color and we're going to follow all the roads to darken all of the pathways down in the city so things aren't so bright and vibrant. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to go in and add my green spaces, my areas that are specifically designed to be green, so parks and other inland areas. So I'm going to choose a reasonably vibrant green here like that one. And we're going to make some park areas, so such as here, 
we drop our brush size down a little bit this area right here is a perfect park it's on a corner of a city block it's a nice open space perfect for a parkway now that we've added our major areas of cultivated grassland within the city we want to go in and start adding the grasslands to the exterior of the city using so a nice big brush we're just going to go through and add in grassland all over this left hand side of the map right up to the city perimeter and then we're going to do the same up here add some grassland along here feather it into the cultivated grassland here and bring it down here now we'll reduce our brush size as we go so that we don't overlap too much of anything and then as we get close to other features, so other areas of grass, other roads, etc., we're going to drop our opacity down so that we can feather those edges. So if we reduce our brush size and drop our opacity down, you can see here I can go over and blend it into the brown of the streets or into the green that we've already laid down. So we get some nice color change that isn't too stark in contrast. We can go in and feather all of these edges here. So your next step is to decide how you wanna color in the other remaining interior parts of your city blocks. So areas like this up here, and I like to use a nice cool stone color to represent the fact that the city is developed. Maybe it's got cobbled streets or something like that. And just go in with a really low opacity and just color in each city block in this gray color so that when you zoom out you can see that the city is on developed land there might be grass and areas around it but the city itself is a developed area of land with the stone texture for our city laid in we can go in and we can start now adding some trees so i'm going to go into the symbol tool and just place some trees i'm going to be using some of the evergreen trees and i just need to start out by getting the scale right so we'll place a few in each of the parks that are located within the city and then we'll go out and we'll add maybe a forest to the outskirts of the city now that the forests are added and we've added some grassland the city as a whole is complete and we're ready to go in and start adding labels so there we have it once we've added our labels we have a completed map as you can see by mixing the watabu generator along with wonderdraft we can create some really awesome results and the longer you spend on it the better the results are going to be with your blending and adding small details and as you can see by using the watabu maps as assets within wonderdraft it offers us almost unlimited flexibility in what we can do where we can place different items and how we can build our cities in an organic way within Wonderdraft. 